This is Shahar El Ghazi's Too Fast, Too Furious R34 Skyline from the movie. About these shoes, Shahar. I know you got a car here, but I think we should really talk about these shoes. So let's talk about your R34 because obviously we've done some recreations of movie vehicles here ourselves with our own twist on them. Right. Um, now this is more of a period correct, right? Too fast, too furious movie replica, right? right? Is that how you would call it? Yes. This one I'm trying to do it as accurate as possible to the movie, and same with my rest of my cars. I mean, exterior-wise, it's I think it's like almost at 100 percent. Down wow. to the very last detail of airbrushing the actual vinyl to fade into the front of the car, which a lot of people don't do. And that's actually how they did it in the movies. You, yeah. you remember it. I remember it being like that. And I, I did hear Evan when he came in, he mentioned he didn't realize it was like that. So I think a lot of people either took it as shadows or like right. uh, the lighting was bad for that particular shot that they saw, but it actually was like this. Kind exactly. of the same. And it's kind of been like that with every Fast and Furious car that we do or we see is like every time the livery goes on, you're like, Oh, I didn't is notice it? Yeah, that. I didn't yeah. notice this or that. Or like, seeing this is not how I remember the movie car from watching the movie. I <laughs> but you, you just assumed it was lighting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I didn't even notice that it had any differentiations oh, really? at all. Because okay. the, the racing's at night, so you don't really notice. It's it. probably the toys that solidify it. Because if you notice the skyline on his dashboard, <laughs> the toys it doesn't completely have, wrong. It doesn't have the fade on it. Yeah. No, but the As we found, <laughs> the toys are wildly inaccurate. But what I did like about some of the stuff that they did in the second movie was it actually is authentic Japanese tuning company parts you've got veil side on the fd this car you have c west right. and one of my favorite pieces of this car is the rear wing yeah. which as uh, hri wheels they actually stepped it up i feel like for the second movie it's almost like they had a bigger budget the kit in this one in particular didn't age as well as some of the other stuff i would uh, say this aged better than a lot of the other movie a lot of the other movie cars so. yeah but this wasn't the C West kit to have for an R34. This was like, in my opinion, they, they had two kits. I think the other one was a little bit more stylish. Okay. But this one was a little more outlandish, more roundy, more cartoony looking. And I think it fit for the movie perfectly. I think it makes the car looks wider also. Like the side skirts come out so much in the yeah. rear bumper. They, it's crazy. Like the, the wheels are GTR spec and it's still like, I feel like it needs like, in a little bit. yeah, exactly. Like Prayer. I said, it's a Sea West body kit. This is a used body kit that my buddy Elshad helped me get from Russia. It oh was a God. freaking mission. You know, the body kit was maybe like two thousand dollars, and the shipping was probably seven. Yeah. Insane. Sea West still make this kit. Sea West make this kit to order, but, right? So I got this car in 2020, just when COVID started and everybody shut down. So okay. there was no way to get anything. Uh, we got a used body kit and it was a mission to get it to Canada. I bought this car in Canada in 2020. We're working with Nitrous Supply uh, to do the nitrous purging system. So we got the movie accurate uh, front sprayer for the inner cooler. Yeah. Back then they worked with NX, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yes, Nitrous um, Express, yeah. Exactly. Um, wheels, wheels are a crazy no. story. Hold on. Okay. But before we get into the wheels, <laughs> one thing that this car was famous for in the movie was the nitrous purge. When the he pulls up purge. to the race, there's a little purge tube that comes out the side it's of that there. It. It's gonna have it. I it, don't see it here. It's just a matter of time. He doesn't have it yet. Don't worry about ah, it. Ah, that's it's the first coming. thing I looked for. I'll come by to your house the, the, the no, 8 a.m. when you're coming out and I'll spray it straight <laughs> to your... <laughs> I think you should get I, promise, I think you should get I the parts to do it and bring it here and we should help you. No, install. we already have the parts. So like I said, we're working with nitrous supply and I already got the That'd solenoids, I got everything, I got the I got everything, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have a functional uh, system. So that makes me happy because this car needs to have that purge. That's what it was famous for. But let's talk about these wheels, because I know there's a story behind these. Well, HREs are near and dear to my heart, but Tell us how you found these wheels or what you I'm did. I'm actually a fan of HREs for as long as I can remember myself and I always liked their wheels. What disappointed me the most, I went into their facility and yeah, the, the ironic thing is that you can walk in and they can offer you to create your own design and they're going to make it from scratch yeah. for you. Yeah. And as I'm walking in and they're giving me the tour and they're, they're saying that and I'm like, yeah, this That's is exactly, exactly what, what I need. I this do. is what I'm here for. 
I just want you to take this old design that you already have and make it. And they're like, uh, no, we're not going to do it. I'm like, why? So these yeah. wheels were so hard to find and so hard to, to, to get by that it's like insane. In the last five years that I've been building, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 of these cars and I'm keeping an eye out for those wheels, I've never found one. Mm -hmm. I did found a guy that lent us a wheel so we can 3D scan the face. Mm. And then we had to custom make this wheel remade. from scratch. So I can tell you, the people that work inside of Atria are very proud folks, and they pride themselves on making the finest wheels that they possibly can. Right. I think my guess to why they wouldn't recreate this wheel for you is because this isn't something that they would currently make today. Right. Like this, this is very. If you notice, this amount of material and stuff here that hasn't right. been pocketed or clearanced or lightened like it's very this is a very rudimentary wheel right but for that era this was what they were creating and now they've surpassed that level right. and i think they don't want to take a step back that's yeah. my opinion i don't know if that's true for me the wheels are super important with any replica uh, i'm making and some in some of the cases the wheels actually dictate the car i was building sure. so martin and i uh the guy in canada that did this whole thing with me he actually contacted a wheel company overseas and we actually worked with them for probably like six or seven months he went back and forth version. with them and they they sent him samples and everything and we we made it exactly to a gtr spec to make sure the offset is great the the lips everything barrels everything and is like a hundred percent you're going to show us later but you have picture proof of the actual wheel from the movie cars that you're able the like close-ups that you're able to send to have these right. basically if you didn't know these weren't real hres you you probably wouldn't know right right so. and we actually 3d scan an oh, authentic okay. HRE. HRE. It's like it's somebody gave us a yeah. face to do the actual scan so that was a, a huge That's shortcut it. as well from that point on it's just a lips it and just barrel. wasn't manufactured in their <clears> facility <throat> but it's as close as you could get to exactly. the actual thing. Really cool story. And that's what I love about these recreations is like digging in deep into your past and how you went about building these because we know how hard it is to find yeah. parts for these cars, especially they're 20, 25 years old already now, right. or whatever it is, and I, I guess it's 20 years old. And this one started its life Typical. as a 98 Skyline GTT. Yeah. So the slimmer quarter panels, different hood, different yeah. fenders, different everything. So maybe you can give us some insight on these cars. Because I'm friends with Sean Morris, who was involved in acquiring these cars for the movie set, he told me at one point in time, I don't know if it's 100% accurate or not, but only one of the cars, the hero car, was actually a GTR. So the from rest my, of the cars were GTTs. So that's actually wrong from, I mean, from what I know, from what Greg Lieberman was sharing with me for the second movie, they actually used all GTRs. So oh, okay. all the cars in the Maybe second I'm movie the was GTRs. The, for the Fast 4 movie, they had the hero car as a, as a GTR. The rest of them was GTTs. Oh, okay. And you can clearly see that because the cluster is different. Yeah. And when you have all those scenes, sometimes yeah. they show the cluster and you can clearly see a GTT it's cluster not and same, not a GTR yeah. and stuff like that. But in Too Fast, Too Furious, I believe all of them were or GTRs. True GTRs. Oh, wow. To begin so with. knowing that you started with the GTT, you had to widen these rear arches. Correct. Correct. This car, we did it fairly fast. It's funny because I had it for four years and then we got the call from the cool Germans in, in Liquid Mali to requesting to bring the car for SEMA. Oh, wow. And the car was like completely stuck and it was like a month away and they're like, will you make it? I'm like, sure. No <laughs> We've all yeah. been there before. The right? car be there, yeah. Hey, Quinn. Yeah. Too many times. <laughs> they're like, too many times. <laughs> Rob from the marketing team, is the car ready? Yes, yeah, it's, there, it's ready to start working on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I did called. You, did you use steel? No, we actually used fiberglass. Okay. So I called Martin. That was like our, our best bet yeah. as far as the timeline because yep. to get the steel quarter panels uh, from Nismo was such a hard... Uh, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah. so we, we went with and, uh, fiberglass. And it's very expensive. Correct. We went with fiberglass. We got the, the GTR masks. Uh, we actually went to the Nissan, the local Nissan dealership in Canada and we bought all the OEM stuff for the hood conversion because you need the, the front, you need mm -hmm. the hinges, yeah. uh, the gas cap. A bunch of mm -hmm. you know uh, stuff we needed, and we just started working on it. Fenders, wow. we got everything down to the T. I can tell you guys. I know you're in a rush, you say, but you can. T I would have thought these were steel. Yeah. I thought you did a steel oh, replacement because yeah, it, it looks really. Yeah. Good. It's it's done well and. Uh, the car was white. Uh, we painted it the correct color. It's a house of color 
BBC 42 silver that they had. A lot of people, th some people think it's the Sonic Silver, some people think oh, it's the, the KR4, but it's not. It's that was going to be a question I asked you, because this color, look, the blue looks very Bayside blue -y. Correct. So I was wondering if the car started life as a Bayside blue car and was sprayed House of Color silver and this was left behind? Or if it was a full respray? No, it's a full respray. So the not, cars. Not your car in no, back then in the movie, they got just they just got random five or six cars. Oh, okay. Craig's car was even black, you know, and they just oh, okay. they they sprayed it uh, House of Color. My, they worked back then with House of Color, yeah, so yeah. majority of the cars were uh, those uh, color brands. It's like I I landed there a week or two weeks before SEMA. I landed in Canada. The car was like bone stock. I got there at 4 p.m. By midnight, the whole car was apart. We, we took <laughs> off the doors, the fenders, the hood, the trunk, everything. We rented a local uh, spray booth in someone's backyard, which was insanely nice. Uh, his buddy Mike and we just started working on the car. Wow. By the end of day two, we realized just the two of us not going to make it. So Mike pitched in and started helping us working on the car. Oh, oh my so God. you're talking about two or three people, which I have zero knowledge with painting yeah. a car or primary in a car or, or, you know, you do uh, now. I do now. So. <laughs> Martin did the, the painting and everything. I helped with some priming, I helped with sanding, I helped with uh, all that stuff wow. and disassembling and assembling. That's why half of the stuff is broken on it because I broke it. <laughs> that happens, this stuff's old. But I see Quinn eyeballing this wing over yeah, here. This wing? Dude, I love this. Yeah. So like it looked cool in the movie, but actually seeing this setup in person, I like it way more. Yeah. I didn't realize it had like this is my favorite part of the car plate. like Actually. it looks so cool yeah, and this, this is all wing, carbon this wing is so crazy in my four years of gathering parts for this car I contacted uh, C West like five times to order the wing and every time I got the same answer we have no ETA for you you can put an order you'll get it now you'll get it in six months you'll get it whatever now this is a custom size they have sizes from 1400 to 1700 millimeters mm -hmm. and the movie was 1550 millimeters mm -hmm. so you have to request them to make it i wasn't even thinking about it when i was like yeah sure liquid molly we're gonna make it in time and i was like when we finish the car we're in the spray boot the car is complete i turned on the car and i started driving to la from the spray boot the, the paint is probably like five minutes old <laughs> <laughs> typical sema build and as i'm driving i'm like hey you know what i don't have a wing you know what am i gonna do with the wing <laughs> Funny enough, I remembered that uh, Daryl, we just driven, were planning on doing this car, and I remember they already acquired the car, they acquired the body kit, they acquired the wing. And after I got to LA, I picked up the phone and I'm like, hey Daryl, would you help us out with lending us the wing or buying the wing from you? Because I know you're not planning on doing this car just now. You probably has like six months out. And he was so helpful and so understanding. and came up my way and he's like, Sean, come by, and, you know, Shahar, just come by and pick up the wing. I paid him for it and that's how I got to see my with, <laughs> with his help, with Daryl's yeah. help, it, it was the last piece of the puzzle. I met him very briefly at a Greddy open house last year. He seems like a really nice guy. We were supposed to drop off the car on Monday for SEMA because mm -hmm. you have to get it the day yeah. before. Yeah. I got home on a Friday after we did this car in five days. On a Friday, I got home at 6 p.m. My buddy Elshad came by, started detailing the car and starting to like slightly buff it so we can do the decals. The next day, it's already went to LRG wraps and we did the decals. Wow. And he's like, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. The paint is the day old. I'm like, just do it. Don't worry about it. Stick it on. And he, he was like, so afraid to, to put the decals on, but he did an amazing I job. I can't blame him. He and that is nerve wracking. You know, <laughs> my Durango, I had a little, a, a slight fender bender in the back and I came by and I'm like, hey, I just need the rear stripes in it. And I'm like, how long did you paint it? Oh, I just came from this paper. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> One of the things I love about you, Shahar, is you're not about, you build a replica car, but you're not about faking the funk. And I see you put a GTT badge on the back. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, GTR community will thank you for that. I'm, uh, not, I'm a... not here to claim something it's not. And for me, like, I don't want anybody to get offended by it but with me if it's not it it's not it and yeah. i'm proud of what it is yeah, you know it should be and for me i'm listen i'm a born project manager and every one of my cars starts 
with an Excel file yeah. and a budget and an overhead yeah. and everything. For me, even though in 2020 GTRs were fairly cheap, yeah. I think back then when I bought my under 100. when I bought my two R34s, they were cheaper than buying one, which was like around the 60,000 or 55,000. Oh, the GTTs were much cheaper than the GTR I back then. Two. Yeah. In 2020, the GTTs have actually spiked, right? Yeah, I bought two <laughs> in 2020 for less than what one GTR oh would gosh. cost back then. But for me back then, I was like, why would I start with a base that's so high and destroy a GTR completely? Because if I'm starting with a GTR to do this project, I'm going to trash the wing, trash the, the bumpers, yeah. trash the side skirts, trash the wheels, trash the interior, trash the steering wheel, trash everything, paint it a non-GTR color. It didn't make sense to me to make plus as far money. as uh, budget wise for me Sorry. i love it i'm not cloning it as a gtr because i want to fool people that it looks like a gtr i'm cloning it as a fast and furious car because when i saw the movie for the first time and back then and still to today i'm a muscle car guy i know racing stripes is not you know the first thing a jdm yeah. Yeah. guy would do and i've never seen a, a racing stripes on a jdm and i know back then craig said he hated it but I absolutely love it. Yeah. And uh, the silver with the blue, I'm a sucker for blue. I love this car from the moment I saw it. So, so I was like. For me, you mentioned racing strips. For me, Quinn didn't notice the fade. color change fade. But what I never noticed was the stripes ending at the top of the hood. I thought they went all the way over the right. car. Right. And they don't. They don't. Which is interesting. Like, that's <laughs> the one thing that fooled me. They don't. For sure. They don't. Well, I mean, the outside is stunning, and I notice you also have the underglow, which is perfect because that scene. And the, art, the underglow is actually a legit street glow. Oh, really? Neon lights from Damn. back in the day. Glass they, tubes. Yeah, they actually. <laughs> so this is so the uh, one of the main guys, uh, Jack at Street Glow, actually signed these no tubes. Way. You can go under the car and see his signature. It's a tube in a tube yeah. to protect it, and it's yeah, it's, it's insane. I'm so happy so That's cool. to have like the exact same company that did the neon lights yeah. on the cars back in the day. I gotta do it. We gotta look inside. Being a GTR R34 owner myself, I know where all the the wear spots are on these interiors, and just kind of the hard things to get. Fortunately for us, a lot of the R34 interior stuff still available, new from right. the dealership, which is great. Right. Like. You just need to sell a kidney or two yeah, to get it's, them. Yeah, it's just expensive. But one thing I noticed is you, you upgraded to the Nismo floor mats, which I love the fact they still have the round logo, right. even though they're modern. Exactly. I don't know why they haven't changed that, but yeah. that's cool because the mid logo stuff's more desirable in my opinion. The seats. This is exactly how the movie car was. So those yeah. seats, I think they share the same seats for the RT4 the first movie Eclipse, the first movie Jetta, like they had those Sparco Torino 2 and yeah. Sparco Milano. Yeah, um, they bought a whole container of them they probably. They, probably. <laughs> I mean, Sparco was a big sponsor back then of the movie and they got everything. Those this old so logos find, are huh? so hard to find. So I have these in my car in 1999. No and I, I love this because it was an actual seatbelt buckle. Now this looks like you found these brand new. So check this out. Not faded, usually they fade. So check this out. Okay. I bought a set of uh, harnesses off of a doom buggy or whatever that had this logo. Okay. I got this with the seats to my buddy guy, to my buddy Alex at MS MST uh, Upholstery. Uh -huh. I bought a brand new set from Sparco. Okay. And he switched the, the he sewed the patches he switched on. the patches on. Smart so idea. So I have like a brand new set. Yeah. I up mean, to how date, else can everything? you pull yeah. out? You gotta be creative. Yeah. I can tell and now, this one looks a little bit more faded than this one. Yeah. This maybe was on this side <laughs> at some point. <laughs> but I remember this harness, I had this exact harness in my 99 EM1 Civic. These are so hard to come by these But days. I liked it because it's more like a stock seatbelt, the way yeah. it functions. Yeah, yeah. And then Shamrock interior shared with us fabric patches. Oh yeah. So we can do the interior in the exact oh, same colors. Oh wait, so colors. Shamrock still had the, the color swatches. We went to visit them Man. in Miami and they had, and they still had a, a huge photo album and everything. It's crazy to me that that is like the colorway for the car. Yeah. Like it feels like it's wrong because it just looks like it, I don't know, you know? It's just like one of those things that looks so different in person than it does. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy. During the movie, they, they wanted everything to be bright, right? Exactly. 
So we did the front and back seats to match the quarter, the back panels, the door cards. And then we painted all the silver stuff. Yeah, this is all stuff. silver. Because these would have been black on the actual seat. It's so seat, easy right? to break them. That steering wheel is so... That's why when you saw me pulling this, I was very yeah. delicate because I know that that's yeah, been because we already broke these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it. Yeah, you have to be cautious with these because they're just, they're old and they, they break just like the human body. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's old and it breaks. But man, this is cool. So you have, this is uh, the right wheel with the nitrous buttons and everything, the purge button. Oh, horn yep. buttons work. That's good. So I connected them to the <laughs> horn and this is going to be my purge. So one of them going to purge to the intercooler sprayer and one of them is going to purge to the bumper. So Just being a GTT, this car wouldn't have had the MFD, the multifunction display. I Correct. see you've added that for, I assume for just credibility sake of the car being a replica. Correct. But those MFDs I know cost seven to ten thousand dollars. How right. did you accomplish this without spending GTR money? So basically, the GTT comes with like the three gauge pod. Yep. Um, yep. You take the uh, the AC uh, vents out, yep. and you have those uh, screws. It all comes out yeah, with like yeah. two screws. We got an OEM MFD cover. That's still available from Nissan. That's still available that, from which Nissan. Is good. Like five hundred bucks yeah. or something like that. That's stupid. And yeah. then what we did is we took a friend's MFD we made a mold out of it. Martin made a mold out of it. So the face of it looks like the MFD. The screen is actually a five inch Raspberry computer screen. Mm. So it gives you the CarPlay and all the, the cool stuff. I can play music on it. I can play <laughs> movies on it. I can hook up a keyboard. So none it. of those buttons work. Uh, no. It's all for look. It's for but look. The Raspberry screen, is it touch screen or is Correct. it? A touch screen and like a, you so. can hook up a Bluetooth uh, yeah. That's mouse and keyboard. That's one of the cool things like I see because the MFD is now becoming 25 years old, they're starting to break. Right. And the market value being seven to $10,000 to buy one that actually functions. Mine recently went bad and I'm looking for a solution. There are- buy another RT4 for that much. <laughs> there, there, are, there are some other options that you can use a Haltech ECU and upgrade Correct. to their IC7 and put it there. Some Correct. people that's have done that. most people would do. Um, there's also another company in Japan that's making something that is like an MFD, but it's more of a modern version. And, you can and it always, fits the same yeah, housing. And, you, and uh, th there's a bun there's a company in Australia that did like a, a plug and play for a seven inch for the Haltech mm. uh, mm. face, the IC7, mm -hmm. that you can just insert another seven like inch an screen. MFD. It would look like an <laughs> MFD as well. I didn't care about making it look like an MFD because right. it's not. Right. And I'm not here to show yeah. something. You just want again. it to look like it did in the movie. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's neat to hear people's stories it, of how they've off. accomplished when this. When it's on, I really want my car play. That's all I yeah. want. Yeah, I'm, the same, <laughs> way. I'm, the, I'm the same way. All right, Shahar, I got to say it. It's cliche, but pop the hood. 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 All right, well, we know this is a GTT, so we're not going to see an RB26 under here, but wow, we do see a pretty clean little RB25. Some good I mean, carbon. basically, it's a, it's a stock RB25 uh, Neo single turbo, nothing major. We just did the intake and some carbon bits and pieces. With most of my cars, I'm really not after horsepower anymore. Sure, sure. I'm after reliability because, you to run and drive and again, I drive those cars anywhere. I probably has have more seat time in, in the 33 and the 34 than anybody ah, I know. I know, I've seen you driving the 33 a lot, actually. The 33, I physically drove it, me and my buddy John, we picked it up in North Carolina, we physically drove it for two days through Jacksonville, Tampa, and all the way down to Miami. This car, I physically drove it from Vancouver, 22 hours straight. Oh my gosh. All the way here. <laughs> Handled like a champ. Snow, rain, awesome. pitch black, hot, whatever you, you name it, it's been through it. So, so keeping it stock or stock-ish stock is yeah. really important because you want to be able to get in this and take it to a meet or to a, a car show or an event. You, yeah. I'm sure you do a lot of events with these, these cars because everybody wants to see them. Yeah, he's at so. every event we're at. I, yeah, every or more, one. Yeah. <laughs> more. It's yeah. crazy. Most of these cars, they're JDM legends. They're not slow cars. They're not fast to today's standards, yeah. right? But you know, 300 horsepower, 250, whatever for those cars, it feels and handles great for what it is. This one, we, we did a HKS coilovers on it. It handles amazing. It's a great car, you know? I don't feel like I'm, I'm missing more power. Right. Maybe it's something I'm gonna get into in the future, but when I wanna go fast, I take my Viper. Yeah. So. Hey. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you for showing us under the hood as well. I did notice some things on the dash. Okay. And we should talk about that because it's pretty cool. I have a follower. He made this custom 
Brian O'Connor <laughs> badge. Cool. I, I don't know anybody else that has this. I don't think so. I've seen people make the the wallet, like the Brian O'Connor wallet from the. Oh my gosh. The first it even has the, the cards, yeah, the yeah, actual it has the cards. cards and stuff. Cody saw it and he was like, oh, that's cool. Funny enough, today he lives in Arizona. So it's Brian like. Brian Earl Spilner. Brian Earl Spilner. Sounds like a serial killer name. Is that what you are? Are you a serial, a serial killer? <laughs> Don't come around It looks, anymore. actually looks quite like it's, the exact it's thing, the right? the exact thing. Like, and then this would have been his badge. 2000 yeah. LAPD Officer of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> right. movie so prop cool, movie. man. So that's an actual movie prop. Yeah, so it's, no, I mean, my, my buddy Mark, he made oh, it. Okay. But he just, so people don't take oh, it yeah. out and make it like a, yeah. uh, fake it as a badge he wrote a movie, movie prop, prop only. only oh my god but it's, it's those little cool stuff that you know when i started doing these cars it was like me against the world and today i have a little bit more following and i'm, I'm blessed for it and i'm grateful for it and sometimes followers would reach out with cool stuff like that and i'm like hell yeah let's yes. do it right now yes you know that the that. shoes it's like yeah, yeah of course it's like so you took it from a hobby to this is actually turned into sort of a lifestyle for you because like quinn was saying you're Everywhere we go, you're there with some of these cars. And it's usually not just one of these cars that's there. You usually have your Dude, friends yeah. driving like last six we were, of them. Last time we were at Fuel Fest, he took up like two full roads. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> I love Fuel it. Fuel Fest, we had 25 cars. Obviously, not, of the, not all of them are uh, mine. We have like, today we have like a, a great big team and they have their own cars and we came together and we just did the whole thing. At the house, I probably have a few more. Wow. <laughs> uh, I mean, your passion has turned into something really cool and, and you get to enjoy this every day, which to me is, I mean, this is why you do this, right? Like, to me, I, I moved here five years ago from Israel and with, with Israel, you can modify, but to a degree, like it's, it's, they're really strict over there. So when I got here and following the movies and all that, I really wanted to do something. I really wanted to own these cars. Back when I lived in Israel, they didn't have Vipers, they didn't have Supras, they didn't have <laughs> RX-7s, no way so for really Skylines. you moved here from Israel to chase your dreams. My dream car was the Viper. Yeah. We actually bought the Viper the day we landed. And that explains your the Instagram day, handle. The day we landed. The day we landed, we we bought the Viper. We didn't even have a place to stay. My buddy gave us an RV. Oh my God. My buddy Rod gave us like an 80s RV. He hooked it up to power and sewer in his backyard. And we lived there for like maybe six months. But you had a Viper. I had two. <laughs> <laughs> I had one for me and one for my wife. The first one we bought the day we landed. I didn't even have an Instagram. And I was walking around the neighborhood. I was like the new kid on the block. And I was walking the dog and people were like, who are you? I'm like, oh, oh, you're the guy with the Vipers. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm the, the Vipers, Vipers guy. guy. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, we the opened an Instagram. History. That's That was the name. I'm like, sure. And if you scroll down back enough to my first photo on my, my Instagram, it would be me next to the two Vipers doing that with the RV in the background. So yeah, you could, but man, <laughs> could see talk about living the dream. A $2,000 RV with <laughs> two Vipers next to it. <laughs> but yeah, man, when I got here, I, I, I was like, I'm here now, it's the US, everything is open, everything is on the table. I have an opportunity to fulfill my dreams and get all those JDM legends. And Man, I, that's such a neat story. And you've, you've told me that before, but it, I think I must have met you pretty shortly after you moved here. You do. Because yeah. it was probably four or five years ago. Yeah, and I, I remember you here. telling me the first thing you did was buy a Viper. And I had forgotten that until you just refreshed yeah. my memory. That's, yeah. I didn't know you bought two. The day, the day we landed, I bought, you know, it was like a 17-hour flight. Me, my wife, our little dog, seven suitcases, <laughs> three hours in immigration doing the, the social security and stuff. Yeah. And then my buddy takes us uh, to his place. And I'm like, hey, Ron, can you um, take me? Two hours away, I don't even remember where it was, Blaine or some, no, um, Bowman. I don't remember where it was to pick up a car and my wife was like, today, you're gonna get it today. Right. I'm like, babe, we need a car to yeah. go get by. Yeah. Yeah. We need a Viper. <laughs> we need a Viper. We need a Viper. To, <laughs> to yeah. go uh, get the groceries most practical and stuff. The most practical grocery car. getter you can buy. <laughs> Wait, you know, Shahar, we have a Viper and we know you're lying. <laughs> Dude, I bought the Viper, and you gotta understand, Vipers, they come from factor with, with the first gens. No roof, mm -hmm. no door handles, yeah. no windows, yeah. no rear window, nothing. Yeah. And that car, like... Was that what you, you bought? You can buy an optional uh, roof, an optional um, soft top, hard top, <laughs> windows. Yeah, seriously, it comes with nothing. It was like mid-May, it was freezing. My wife was like, 
you drive this i'm, I'm going back home with rod <laughs> I'm like, oh and i was like extreme cold and just a smile on my face the care, whole huh? way yeah. back i didn't care. it was the first time i saw a viper <laughs> a first gen viper which was my dream car for as long as i can remember that was, was like i'm seeing it in person that was the the poster above my bed so it's funny enough i used to visit the u.s for like a decade i would come to sema i would come to detroit autorama oh, yeah, okay. but i've never seen a first generation viper right. that was the first time i've seen it the first time i drove it. Bought it and the guy was like do you want to test drive it i'm like yeah of course and I'm like, like, I'm, I have, I'm like Man. keeping it poker face to negotiate pricing and stuff, but I'm like dead inside. I'm yeah. like, you already knew you were buying I'm it. I'm like, huh? no, it's not, it I'm wasn't not even, it wasn't even a question. I'm not leaving here without this car. Doesn't matter which Viper it was. <laughs> and sure enough, 94, third owner, 7,000 miles when I bought it. Insanely nice car. That's crazy. And you still have it? Of course. Well, dude, thank you so much for showing us around this uh, awesome replica R34. I think Quinn and I are both ear to ear smiles at this point. I love point. it. It's so um, good. And also, Thanks for having me. Be beyond that, dude, like, first of all, you drove down here almost five hours, so that's <laughs> commendable. Thank you. Um, but sharing these with us and sharing your beautiful story about moving here and your Viper, that's, that moved me a lot. So thank you for that. But I know you got one other little trinket that you wanted to show us. Yeah. So let's do that now. Let's show the audience what you out. brought down for us here. What we got here, Mick? I love this stuff. This is just nostalgic right here. I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to these same, kind of little stuff. Same. Um, I could stare at this forever and try to understand it. So this is a document from someone on the, the staff. And if you notice, it says The Fast and The Furious 2, which we know was not the movie name. And this is from October 17, 2002. They changed the name of the movie. So this was pre-movie. And it says it's for Lee. It's a note from Lisa to Lee saying, hey, we're gonna shoot at 7 p.m. today. Call me if you wanna come down to the set. Um, let me know so I can get your daughter so she can see the action and leaves her cell phone number. Yeah. And this is, you know, that's obviously- Lee from Shamrock. Lee from and Shamrock. that's the same yeah. guys that did it years, 20 years ago. Yeah. They're still in business. Their business is like 50 years old. They haven't changed anything so cool. and amazing, amazing guys. So it's they crazy. held on to all this that allowed you to take photocopies of it basically. Yeah. Yeah. But they realized like how much we love the movie and yeah. we we actually got to them like there's something for us you yeah. know so they just lee just stopped everything he was doing and just started they sharing stories with us out. and that's <laughs> these kind of little stuff is everything to me yeah, you know when i sure. when i do those i mean you've got many more things but this is also a call sheet map so this is for the first race the firehouse intersection race one start finish line north miami avenue and northeast northwest 14th street so if you guys are in miami that's where the race was filmed and it tells you where the crew is going to park, how long it takes to get there, how far away it is, and then actual directions. Man, this is so cool. And it's neat to see that they're still using the original Fast and Furious letterhead from the first movie for right. the second movie. You want to go to Miami? I mean, I always want to go to We Miami, can drive this. That would be it cool. It will make it. That would be really no cool. Problem. Here's some more letters as well. Yeah. Talking about different color Recaro logo, as long as it's a Recaro seat. Which is interesting because a lot of the cars had Sparkos, right? The Evos. So had they had like an OEM Recaro. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. And then they reupholstered it because they, the Evos, they had like, the, the Evos were still not in the U.S. Yeah. So they had Evo 7s being transformed to Evo 8s. That's why you see those funky tail lights because they had to reshape the whole thing. Yeah. And they had to reupholstery the seats. Okay. So. so this was with reference to the Recaro trademarking on the OEM seats. And they were reupholstering the seats, so they needed to reapply that for trademark purposes. And you have documentation of it. <laughs> Crazy, man. Bro, I can't thank you enough, one, for bringing your car down and driving five hours each way, which is amazing. But to bring this, this to me is... Friday traffic from Santa Clarita. Yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> to you're, San Diego. you're a madman. But that's why you're so successful in what you do, because you do it for the it passion. You, and the, this, is, this to me is as important or more important than the cars. Yeah. To, to, to me. me. To me as well. Okay. That's really cool, man. To me as well. And it, again, it's crazy to me that I was able to get like stuff from back in the day on my cars like the fd i have like screen used parts 
from a movie car on my car. I was going to ask you if you've you know? ever gotten your hands on actual screen used parts. Yeah, so my... Or I chassis have, even. I have a friend, his name is Mark, he's in Michigan and he acquired a few of those cars and when he upgraded a bunch of those stuff, he just sent it to me and he's like, you can restore those control yeah. arms, you know, yeah. powder coat them, new bushings, new stuff, just put it on your car. Yeah. And I have it on the FD. He sent me an underglow Man. kit, a broken underglow kit. So. For him, it's something that's like, he has the complete car and that's yeah. just a little broken piece for him that he doesn't care about. But for me, I'm like restoring the yeah, neon huge, yeah. uh, tubing kit and just putting it on my car and it's like... One thing out of the first movie that's always intrigued me was always the nitrous setup in the FD where he lifts up the, right. the back of the seat forward and it's got the little golf ball shaped knob to activate the, right. the NOS. And then he has the little push, push button, button on the hazard light that yeah. pops out. And <laughs> Has any of that stuff ever popped up? Like, or is that just a one-off thing in one it car? A, it was a one-off. I think the car that actually had it is in a museum in Vegas, and the, obviously the, this, that seat is not there anymore. Like yeah. somebody actually took it, and he has it. I guess he sold the car without it. Yeah. So, I actually had a guy 3D making the actual knobs. Yeah. yeah. For that nitrous thing, everything else is a sneaky peat uh, yeah. uh, system yeah. and uh, autometer gauges yeah. and stuff, so it's easy to do. And I have spare FDCs Are you at the house. It? Um, it's on the plans. It's okay. I guess I to when, me that's only cool. when I started, I had like one or two cars. Today it, it became a little bit more it's overwhelming. Overwhelming for just one guy. It's just <laughs> so, one thing to build these cars, but then you also have to maintain them so you can get them to events and not right. have them break down. All my cars process. are driving and that's going back to a stock engine and a stock drivetrain, like stock-ish. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So all the cars are running. I have, I don't have one car that's not running and I actually drive each and every one of them almost every other week. I want to thank you, Shahar, for coming down here. Always a pleasure to see you, car. Man. I love this thing and you guys should let us know now in the comments if you want to see more of his cars, more of his builds. I know you have a ton of other Fast and Furious cars that you can bring down as well. I also want you guys to let me know if we should take on the challenge of building our own Too Fast, Too Furious R34. It's over sick. Yeah, I have a feeling we won't be leaving the engine stock. I know. <laughs> Seeing your cars with your take on what's today's version of it, I can't wait to see what you're going to do with the 34. It's been fun. I think all of us have taken a lot of pride in, in building these to our level. It's not the movie replication that what you're doing which is very admirable we've taken it and said you know what if the car was built today this is probably what it would look like and so that's what today's it, tribute yeah with how somebody would build it today like if the you, movie was shot today, today using today's technologies and just the things that we have access to today which is pretty cool it mean, is. it's come a long it way is. in 20 years so i'll take it, any one of these yeah they're, <laughs> they're all great i mean but this you know if we take on a 34 this year I think we might have to get crazy and actually do something really outlandish and Agreed. fun and actually Agreed. use the crap out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are going to have to stay tuned because we've got some plans. They're going to kick off pretty soon. Thank you guys as always so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like down below. Subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next episode.